praising the Lord in the words that the Holy Spirit is giving us. If you have the freedom, let's raise our hands to the Lord because we are building a throne of grace to the King of Glory, the King of Glory who is entering into our bondage, entering into our struggles, entering into our darkness in His glory, in His majesty. The Lord is ascending in our midst and as the Lord is doing this, let's give a mighty round of applause to the Lord. Give Him all the glory, all the praise. Hallelujah. Arise, O God, over all the earth. Be exalted, O Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. We lift you up. We lift you up, we lift you up on our praise and sing it out. We lift you up and we lift you up with everything, oh God. We lift you up on our praise. Be exalted, we lift you up. We lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up on our praise. Arise, oh God, we lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our We lift you up, O oh Lord. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our praises. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our and sisters arise arise for the Lord yes in book of Isaiah 51 3 says listen now my people and come to me and you will have life I will make a lasting covenant with you and give you a blessing I promise to David yes my dear brothers and sisters the Lord is give a promise to you today at this moment Right now, the Lord is giving you a promise that I will be with you and I am your life. So believe it today, my dear brothers and sisters, and surrender this moment to your life and every obstacles and everything that you face, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, the Lord is going to take control. The Lord is alive in your promise. The Lord is giving the promise to you. In the book of Exodus says, the battle is not yours. It is mine. So believe today, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you and is moving in you. 
because the living God is living here. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise, Praise you, Jesus. Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Baba Father. Praise, Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Arise, 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 take your place, be enthroned on a prayer. King of kings, holy God, as we say, arise, take your place, arise, take your place, be enthroned on a praise, arise, King of kings, holy God, as we say, arise. to the Lord. Lift up all the glory, all the praise. Our God arises in the midst of our praise this evening. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, my brother, my sister. God spoke one word. And he turned darkness into light. He spoke one word and he brought dead bones back to life. Jesus spoke one word and he calmed the storm. He spoke one word and he brought Lazarus back to life. So my brother, my sister, no matter what situation you're facing today, it is not a limitation to our God. No matter what weakness you're having in your life, it is not a limitation for God to work in your life. Because right here, right now, He is going to empower us with His Holy Spirit. And He's sending His Holy Spirit into our brokenness, into our darkness, into our dead bones, into our crisis into every situation that we're facing today. And He is breathing life into us. He is breathing His Spirit into us. So at this moment, let's just praise and thank Him for His Holy Spirit, for His Holy Spirit that's renewing our very own spirits, that's giving us life right now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Hallelujah. You, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Glorify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Give myself to 
to you today to be completely swept away lost inside the glory of your love cause deep calls on to deep O oh lord my soul cries out for you alone drowned within the river of your heart. let's sing it together i give myself to you today i give myself to you today to be completely swept lost away, inside lost inside the glory of your love deep calls out to deep o lord deep calls out to deep o lord my soul cries out for you alone drown within the river of your heart you bring your life into my soul i'm alive in you lift it up together let your kingdom shine through my life i want more of you together let's sing you bring your life you bring your life into my i'm alive with you Let your kingdom shine. Let your kingdom shine through my life. Through my life, I want more of you. I want to go to the deeper places, deeper places, Lord, to know the dreams of your heart. Secret places, hidden places, Lord. Till there's nothing left. I wanna go. I wanna go to the deeper places. of the Lord as the Lord is covering over our weakness through the power of the Holy Spirit let's build a throne of praise to the Lord let's lift our voices let's raise our hands to the Lord give him all the glory he's taking us deeper deeper into his love deeper into his security deeper into his glory where we can only see him we can only experience his love and already because he's taking us there let's thank the Lord let's give him all the glory hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise you, Father, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus, thank you, Father, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Let's ask Blessed Mother to intercede for the today's prayer meeting. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. We'd like to welcome any newcomers who've come today for the first time for our prayer meeting. Could you please stand up so we welcome you? Anyone for the first time? Praise the Lord. Shall we give them the round of applause? Please remain standing. There'll be someone giving you a green slip to complete. So we have our regular announcements. Uh, tomorrow being Thursday, we have our service. Praise the Lord. We have our Thursday service meeting where we come together for prayer for all our outreach programs. Please do try and join those. And we have also our regular Sinhala and Tamil prayer meetings um, on Fridays at 6.30 at St. Lawrence's Church Hall. That's this coming Friday. And an English meeting at St. Anthony's Mount Lavinia. We're having that. No, sorry. That's cancelled because of Father Augustine's um, prayer meeting. Uh, the creche is open for those parents who try and avoid coming because of the children. Please do tell the others, those who have little kids, to um, come along for the prayer meeting because we have a creche that's taken care of by servers and so that the parents or grandparents can follow the meetings. We also have uh, the youth will not be meeting on Saturday because of the program of Father Augustine's. Uh, the Cancer Hospital and the Halpatota program. I think Aloma as well as the youth made an announcement last time. So we have um, collection boxes. Those of you who wish to contribute towards that, please do so. We also have a priest and some of the servers here today. Um, the Archdiocese of Colombo has organized a musical concert at St. Joseph's College on the 2nd of December. This is to raise funds for veteran artists who need medical assistance. There are some, um, you know, people who have really given off their lives for, towards the art and culture, and there's no one to really take care of them. So the Archdiocese is having this event to raise funds for this, for medical assistance. Tickets are available. They are being sold outside for 500, 1,000, and 2,000. Do encourage and support this cause. We've also got an, an, on Friday being the second Friday, we will, uh, the last Friday of the month rather, we have the business persons and professionals. That's an invitation to all business persons and professionals at St. Anthony's Church Hall at 6.30 on Friday. So please, please do try and attend. I think Tata will talk more about Father Augustine's program on Saturday. I've got um, a an, an testimony for the glory of God. I'm a mother of three daughters. I was employed as a manager at a leading commercial bank. The reason for me to write this letter is to tell everyone what I experienced recently. I wish I could come in front and tell you this, but I'm too nervous. My story in brief is that I live in Kandana with my brother and sister, occupying in adjoining houses. For the last six to seven years, I have not spoken with my brother and neither with my sister due to a personal dispute. We lived our lives completely separate from each other. We, in fact, became strangers. On 31st October, one of my daughters contracted dengue and was hospitalized. On the fifth day, her condition went from bad to worse, with platelet counts, counts dropping drastically. The scan report indicated a leakage to the bloodstream and they suggested my daughter be transferred to the ICU. I was devastated and broken. I didn't know where to turn. I asked God to take all of us and not only her. So we knelt and cried out to the Lord asking, take all of us, don't take her alone. I wanted to pray and I tried hard, but strangely, even the words of the Lord's Prayer, I forgot. The only thing I repeated was, take us all. At that moment, I suddenly got up and went outside the hospital room and gave a telephone call to my brother with whom I had not spoken for years. I asked him whether he could do me a favor. He said yes and asked me what I needed. I asked him to get down on his knees and pray to God and implore to save my child. He was almost crying and said, don't be afraid, have complete faith in God and that he will pray for us. He, said, he also said that he will be with me as soon as possible. My brother informed my sister and they all continued and asked me to hang on in faith. Then the miracle happened. 
About 10 minutes after the call, the doctor who was treating my daughter came in and said that my daughter's condition has improved and she need not be transferred to the ICU. A blood count was taken and showed an increase in platelet count. I was happy beyond words. Within 20 to 30 minutes, my brother and sister came running to the hospital and it was, there was no animosity there. I believe God used the bottleneck of my daughter being so ill for me to be pushed to talk to my brother, crushing my ego and my pride. Two days later, my daughter was discharged. I just want to praise and thank God for this. Shall we give the Lord a round of applause? Thank you, Jesus. What? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, good evening, brothers and sisters. So, as we come together, we lift our voices, we lift our hearts to the Lord and allow Him to minister to us in a powerful way. So shall we build a throne of praise and worship to the Lord this evening. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Worship you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to you, Father. Bless you, Lord. Honor you, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Bless you, Father. Glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Free yourself by praise. Free yourself by worship. Free yourself as you lift your heart. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name as we lift our voice, as we lift our hearts. We thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Bless you, Father. Lord, as you do. 
presence of the Lord a few moments this evening, my brothers and sisters. When we discover the secret that we are loved by God as we are, it was truly a gift that the Lord offered us. But this evening we must remember that the Israelites were the people of God loved by God in the book of Deuteronomy he said I chose you because you were the least among the nations and I loved you because you were the weakest but see what happened to them though they were the chosen people loved by God at the moment of response they failed to respond to the Messiah of God and another people became the chosen people of God so my brothers and sisters while the Lord loves each of us as we are if we continue to be as we are and practice what we are doing in our own addiction in our own sinfulness in our own giving into our own weakness as we are, the promises of God are no longer of value to us. It is not effective in our lives. And that is why we can be very clear that we will not know the peace of God, nor the future that God has for us. Some of us are mistaken and we think that being loved by God, that God will accept us with our weaknesses and condone it and allow us to live that way unaffected. Not so, my brothers and sisters. He loves us in our weakness, accepts us in our weakness, but invites us to surrender. When we surrender, He invites us to be transformed and changed like Peter was changed and became the saint of God like Saul was changed and became the saint of God like St. Augustine was changed and became the saint of God he calls us to a new life not to continue in our old life telling ourselves that the Lord loves us there can be people like that in our own journey. You know, we carry on a clandestine relationship, but we tell ourselves, no, the Lord loves us and we carry it on nevertheless. My brother, my sister, when we break the commands of God, we suffer the consequences in this life and even in the next if we don't allow Him to minister to us. So tonight is a good day to first of all discover are we unconsciously 
playing this role of continuing to live in our addiction, in our sinfulness, in our bad behavior, in our lust, in our sinful nature, continuing to living that and telling ourselves that the Lord loves us. No, not so, my brother, my sister. The love of God is no longer effective in a person who does not surrender to the heart of God. If you say, yes, I want to be changed. Yes, I want to be led, to be liberated. Yes, I want to go beyond it. Yes, that love has a power to change us and transform us and turn us into saints. But if you refuse to accept that love and refuse to accept the journey into the new place, what happens is we become damned even as the Lord loves us. So today, let's tell the Lord, we want to surrender our woundedness. We want to surrender our weakness. We want to surrender our addiction. We don't want it anymore. We don't want our our sinfulness anymore. We don't want to live in this thing anymore. Lord, liberate us, free us with your mercy, with your love, and give us the joy that you have for us. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your Father. Hallelujah. Your name. Hallelujah. 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 Worship your Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's say the first to us again. Oh
Let's look inside our lives this evening, my brothers and sisters. Is there some addiction, some sinfulness, some wrong thing that holds us? If you ask the question from that sinfulness, from that addiction, from that wrong act, from that wrong relationship, why it is holding us captive? The answer is because our subconscious, our unconscious things that we will be satisfied, we will be fulfilled, we will be loved by my addiction. We will be satisfied and we will be fulfilled by our sin. That's a lie that the world and brokenness and sinfulness brings into us. And in the end, we ask ourselves, what is faith? And the answer is very simple. Faith is, even though I don't feel like it, even though I don't understand it, I believe that Jesus is enough for me. His love is enough. His security is enough. His concern is enough. His answers are enough. If I hold on to him, he's enough. And I take my eyes off my addiction. I take my eyes off my lust. I take my eyes off my wrong relationship. And I fix it on Jesus, knowing by faith that he is more satisfying, more fulfilling, more secure than anything that the world can ever provide for us. And if you want to know a word for that, that's called conversion. We convert by faith to that. And when we convert, the Holy Spirit moves upon our lives and makes that a reality and a truth within us in the most powerful way. So let's look at it tonight in a special way. And you can repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you with all my attachments with all my addictions, with all my sinful inclinations. Lord Jesus, every one of them is promising me satisfaction, happiness, fulfillment, security. Lord Jesus, I know that they are all lies. They are all broken answers distorted perceptions that come from my sinfulness. Lord Jesus, I surrender it all to you and I choose to believe that you are enough for me. You are my satisfaction. You are my joy. You are my fulfillment. You are my lover. You meet every need. You are my riches. You are my fulfillment. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So we give the Lord a mighty hand tonight. Thank you, Lord. Praise your Father. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, worship your Father, bless the Lord. Glory to your name, hallelujah, 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 glory to your name. And actually, as you know more of him, you will begin to know that it is true. His love, his security, his joy, his peace, his satisfaction. The way so it's a it's an amazing gift and just now i heard actually uh i don't know uh, the, uh, the 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 priest who came up with the tickets for the for the program that he was just mentioned by felicia uh uh father tilikaratna he was telling me that just now it has been announced from rome that uh, bishop emmanuel has been made the bishop of mena you know so <laughs> So when we accepted him from Colombo, he's been given the, the, the place, the Bishop of Manor, that is the Bishop of Manor actually fell ill and uh, he was a close friend of ours, uh, Bishop Raya Joseph. Uh, he was the one behind, behind the, the uh, Madhu program, Bishop Raya Joseph. So, but he fell ill 
and then the retired bishop of Trincomalee took over for a bit called Bishop Kingsley Swami Pillai, but now uh, Bishop Emmanuel has been appointed there. So uh, uh, all I can say is we have friends all around and I'm sure the Lord will open more doors for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. So let's go to the meeting. We are dealing with the three pillars of wisdom. The three pillars of wisdom. Can you tell me what the first one is? God needs a person. Yes. If you have forgotten, we stop the meeting. Okay. God needs a person. Okay. So, the second pillar. What's the second pillar? Yes, exactly. Still yes, the one who said it right. Not a person, but that person. Who is the person? Yes, the person who is called by God needs God. Why is that? Because whatever God wants us to do is impossible. So if the call is impossible, relax. Because that's the nature of God. He calls little people, weak people, you know, if you look at the Old Testament, it's very, very strange, you know. Most of the people called to do his work have been taken out of the system. That means people who were not in the system were taken in, you know. If you look at the prophets, almost all of the prophets were people who were doing something else. If you look at, if you look at the kings, it's the same. King Saul uh, then after that King David you can see they were just picked up and uh, Moses if you see you can see they were picked up but once they were picked up they were given a job that was impossible praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord can you Atri can you just adjust this uh, just a little bit bigger like this check check one two three four all right Check one. Okay. Uh, so you will see uh, God is in search of a person, but that person needs God. If I read you the list, number one was Abraham. Abraham was promised. What was Abraham's job? An uh, entire people were going to be raised through Abraham. But the problem was the problem that Abraham had. Abraham was 75 years old when he got the promise and he was close to 100 and yet the promise was not fulfilled. So from that, what do we surmise? Very simple, that if the promise is to be fulfilled, Abraham needs help. So what do you mean by needs help? He needs God. Without it, it will not be fulfilled. The second, was the second one? Moses. Moses is given a job. What's the job he's given? Liberate the slaves from Egypt. So he's not given an army. Neither is he given any other resources. The only resource he's given is, the Lord tells him, I will go with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So it's obvious again. What's the obvious thing? It's obvious. Moses needs help. But no human being can help Moses. Who can help Moses? God. So what's the second truth? People need God. So the second, the third example I gave was the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary is told, God has decided to send the Son of God, the Messiah to the world through you. So when she's given that promise, Again, she's dealing with the same issue. What's the issue she's dealing with? She's not married. Neither does she have a way to have, you know, a child. So, if she's to receive a child, who has to intervene? God has to intervene. Can you see? It goes on. It lists one after the other after the other. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, God needs a person. That person needs God. 
So this morning uh, or yesterday morning, I was reading a, a book of reflections that I read every morning, you know, one reflection a day, 365 beautiful reflections of a man who lived in the 18th century, you know. He lived in the 18th century. In fact, some of us have had the privilege of visiting his grave, you know, in Yorkshire, in England. So when we went to this grave, the grave, the, the cemetery keeper, who was a Yorkshire Englishman, you know, he's asking me, who is this guy anyway? <laughs> you know, everybody from all over the world is coming to see this grave, you know. So obviously he doesn't know and he doesn't care, you know. He's another grave for him. But for us, it's really valuable because he was a man who really brought the power of God into the world. So he's writing. He gets a telegram and a call that tells him, we need your help desperately. Uh, but what the problem is, they're not saying. So he gets into a train and goes to London. So when he goes to London, to this house, the parents, they are weeping, and he asks, what's the problem? How can I help you? And he, they don't say a word. They take him into a room, and in the room is this young girl, tied in chains, held down by four men, and demon possessed. And this, he, he, what he said is recorded. Who, this guy. What does he say? He says, I knew at once that I can't help this girl. So he says, I knew at once I can't help this girl. But I was happy because only God could help her in this situation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? Can you understand? See this man's depths. When he saw her, he realized, I am unable to help her. Now when we realize that we are unable to cope with the situation, what do you get? Fear. What else do you get? Stress. What do you get? Tension. What do you get? Anxiety. But what, he, what did he get? He got happiness. Why? Because he knew somebody. He said, I can't help her, but I know someone who can. Who is that? God. The problem is, the difference is, he was living within the word of God. He was not living within the world alone. So he knew that what is impossible for man is, impossi is possible for God. So what did he do? He exorcised her in the name of Jesus. So you don't, she didn't exorcise her in his name or somebody else's name in the name of Jesus. And he writes, 37 demons were inside. 37. Each one gave their name and left. If they gave the addresses, we could have, uh, you know, because, we could have collected them, you know, because uh, the devils are hardworking. You call them, that's why you call some people hardworking devils. So, 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 uh, uh, so what, what happens is the mindset is impressive because this person knows I can't do anything, but God can do it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the first one is God, is, God needs a person. Second one is that person needs God. So relax. If he calls you, he will empower you. If he, if he in, invites you to do something, he will find the resources. The doors will open, the things will happen, and that's actually our experience every single time. When God calls us to do something, He will find the resources and even the right people at the right time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So today we 
trans, we transfer to the third one. What is the third one? When, when, when people act, God acts. It's an amazing thing. When people act, God acts. So, what's the first one? God is in search of a person. Second one? That person needs God. So we'll put it this way. When that person acts, God acts. So there's a negative side. What is the negative? When that person doesn't act, God also doesn't act. And that's what has happened in the world today. There are many places where nothing happens. Why is that? Because there is no person to act. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Here it is. The threefold flow. So let's look at it. Last time we took Abraham. This time we take Moses. Exodus 14 Verse 10. Exodus 14, 10. The background is, in Exodus 12, the, the, the Passover takes place. And what happens is, now they leave. They leave Egypt on their way. And now the Pharaoh's army is behind them. The Red Sea is in front of them. And here is what happened. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up. Where did they look? Yes. And there, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. So what happened? They looked, looked up and what did they find? Egyptians are marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. Now, we, have, we can learn several things from this little text. What is that? Number one is, what is the first mistake they did? What's the first mistake they did? They didn't look at God they looked at the enemy. Isn't it? That's the first mistake you do. So the first thing, if you are writing down, if you are having a problem, if you start looking at the problem first, what will happen? The problem will become big and greater and bigger and greater. So here is the first lesson we learn. What is that? If you look at the problem first, even looking at God doesn't help. Why is that? Because you are looking at God through your problem. That's why they, what did they do? They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. Now when you have lost your peace, your prayer life is ineffective. You try it and say, when you have lost your peace, <laughs> you can say a hundred prayers, nothing happens. Because you have lost your freedom, the first thing is that, so, you know, Isaiah 25 says, He keeps in perfect peace all those who look upon Him. They keep, he keeps in perfect peace all those who look upon him. Now, what is the mistake they did? They looked at the problem first. So today we have a lesson to learn. If you have a problem, first look at God and remember who he is. Can you remember? Remember who he is from where does that come? Yes? From? From the prayer of one. Nehemiah's prayer. Remember who God is. If you don't do that, you will be terrified. So here it was. 
first of all, what's the first problem? They looked at the problem. What's the second thing that happened? They were filled with fear. You can even call it terror. So when you're filled with terror, you become ineffective. And that's what happens to many people. The problem destroys them. The lust destroys them. The addiction destroys them. They keep looking at it and they are destroyed. And look at this. Look at the next verse. They said to Moses, let's say it again. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? So what the first problem was? They looked at the enemy. The problem, second was, they were terrified. They did the third thing. You know what the third thing is? Can you tell me what? Look at this and tell me what's the third, third issue. They found someone to blame. Now isn't that amazing that three, four thousand years later we are doing the same thing. What is that? When we are stressed out, what do you want to do? Find someone to blame. So those of us who are married, uh, it's easy for us because we don't have to go far. <laughs> Very laughing. <laughs> we don't have to go far. Why is that? There is, there is a helper close by. Blame them. <laughs> it's because of you. Now it's amazing, isn't it? Now, uh, when the report card is no good, whose son or daughter is he? <laughs> Yours. <laughs> if the report card is good, whose son or daughter is it? Mine. <laughs> So, uh, uh, the husband and wife had a fight and uh, they, were, they, were, they were driving along in silence, you know that, no? So you can have the stony silence in the vehicle, you know? And, uh, and uh, uh, some cows crossed the road, you know? So the husband braked the car and the child asked uh, uh, from... From where did these cows come? And then the husband who was still angry with the wife said, they are your, your mother's relations, you know. So then she responded immediately and said, yes, they are, but only by marriage. <laughs> so, so, so you can see, so you can see how we... Pass it on, isn't it? And this is this system is thousands of years old. What's the system? Blame somebody for your problem. He's the one who did it. She's the one who did it. They are the ones who started it. This that happened, and it doesn't solve anything, but gives you a little relief at that time. That's why we blame people, isn't it? We give, we get a, a little relief. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at the next verse. Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. What's the fourth thing? You can't find what the fourth one is. What is it? You can write the word. What's the word? Regret. In vain I married you. <laughs> I don't think any of you have said that looking at you. You look... Uh, <laughs> in vain, you know. I should, have, I should have married so and so was running after me so long, you know. And I came and married you, see what I did, you know. 
what was the word you call regret so i read this thing you know a uh, lady went to the dentist you know and and uh, you know that dentists have conversations with their with their patients sometimes they forget that the patient can't answer because the mouth is open but uh, <laughs> god uh, praise the lord uh, praise the lord these are these are principles that actually work in our lives but i've never seen anybody who is able to remain still only after the problem it is only if you have a prayer life if you have a spiritual life if you have a daily discipline of sitting at the feet of jesus that you can handle the crisis without becoming shifted if you don't have that i can guarantee you the the blow will break you up praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord that's why a lot of people fall apart in a crisis but if you hold to the truth of this reality the lord gives us a promise you don't worry the lord will fight for you so we tell ourselves the lord will fight for you don't worry but we don't allow him by becoming still here is the key become still in his presence look at the next verse verse 15 then the lord said to moses why are you crying to me tell the israelites to move on now all this time they were crying to god now remember god needs a person that person needs god but the third one is a person acts when the person acts what happens god acts now god is telling them what is he saying now is the time to act so he says what is the action of the israelites stop waiting and wailing and weeping and move forward i was thinking when i was praying this verse i was asking what if they had moved backwards instead of moving forward would the miracle have happened what do you think no can you see when people act what happens god acts they said time to be at his feet and once that time is complete there is a time to take a step when you take that little step what happens god takes a major step praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord but if the foundation is not there what's the foundation if you have not if you don't experience the call of god if you don't experience his strength in your life just acting provides nothing are you following what i'm saying the foundation is 1 2 and 3 and here it is the lord said now it is time if you look at the if you look at the feeding of the 5000 at the lunch time they had a discussion what's the discussion you know there is nothing to give these people there are 5000 people what do we do then the lord said give me what you have got he lifted it up to the lord he gave thanks and then what do you do he said act how do you act distribute it lord this will never suffice if they said the miracle would not have happened so many of us have never found a miracle because we haven't taken the first step praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord when you take the first step the next ones are flowing from god can you understand what i'm saying can you see here so again it's all linked you know if you look at the feeding of the 5000 it's linked it's there is a time to to pray there's a time to offer it to god but there is a time to take a step 
deeper. So those who walk with God know that. They know what that time is. They know what the, time, the offering is. And they can take that step at the right time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Clear what I'm saying. See the next verse is beautifully given there. He tells the people, take, go forward. Then he tells Moses, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Then Moses has to do something. What has Moses to do? Stretch out the staff. If Aaron stretched out the staff, would the same thing have happened? What do you think? If we stretch out the staff, will the same thing happen? No, because God needs a person. That person already called. That person needs God. But when that person acts, God himself acts. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Should we give the Lord a hand, my brothers and sisters? Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Can you, can you understand what I'm saying? Here is the answer the Lord is giving us. When this person acts, God acts. If Moses said, don't be silly, Lord. How can the seas part when I put out this staff and he doesn't put it, what will happen? Nothing will happen. Can you see now? Divine human relationship. This divine human relationship is the key to the power and the miracles that God wants to bring to this world. God is in search of a person. This person is in need of God. And when that person acts, who acts? God acts. And suddenly, into that situation will come God's power. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to show you tonight the secret of this whole thing. How did such a thing take place? We have an insight. We have a beautiful insight tonight. I want to show you. And it is found in Exodus. Uh, 33 verse 7. Exodus 33 verse 7. Now... <laughs> now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away calling it the tent of meeting what do you call it? anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. If you want to know the background of the tabernacle for the Holy Eucharist, here it is. So unfortunately, you know, these parts are not taught too much to people who don't like the Catholic tradition of the Holy Eucharist. Here was a place called the tent of meeting. Whom did they meet? Whom do you think? They met God. So wherever Moses went, was the first thing he did? He pitched the tent of meeting. Do you follow what I'm saying? Actually, this time when we were in England, we were taken to a a famous cathedral. The cathedral has a history. It was an Augustinian 
cathedral, that is, Augustinian monks had this cathedral. Then Henry VIII, uh, actually, he gave up the Catholic uh, faith and he formed the Church of England and he ordered all Roman symbols to be removed from the cathedral. So that means uh, all, the, all the saints, the pictures uh, that uh, represented the saints, everything was removed. And it became an Anglican cathedral. Now, it is still an Anglican cathedral. Now, those of us who went will bear witness. The moment you enter that cathedral, the sense you get is you are entering a museum. You are entering an antiques collection. It's only a building keeping antiques together. But you go to a church where the Blessed Sacrament is venerated and you will see. What will you see? Immediately there is something called the presence of God. And those of us who are open, you know what that means. Immediately, there is like an awareness of a fullness. It's not, no longer a building. It's no longer a meeting place. It is the tent of meeting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Actually, in England, uh, two, uh, three years ago, uh, in East London, we went to this church, we were, doing, uh, we were doing this retreat, the four-step retreat, and I was talking to a deacon, you know. Uh, he was a guy who was going to be made a priest in a few months. So uh, he was having a chat with me, and he was telling me, you know, I am the only Catholic uh, among a whole family of Protestants. So I was intrigued, you know. I asked, how did you become a Catholic? You know, can you tell me how you did that? And then he explained, I used to go to school past a Catholic church. And I saw this old, old priest, every time I passed, he was seated and praying, and I was wondering what he was doing. He said. So one day I peeped in, he said. He said, because I've been given this whole idea of the terrible idol worshippers, <laughs> the, the, the Roman Catholics are, you know, they call him, they gave a name for that. They call them Papist, you know. That is, they follow the Pope. You know, <laughs> you know Papist, there's a name that, uh, derogatory name that is used, you know. And he didn't want to have anything to do, but he peeped in, he said. And he said, I sense this presence in this place. I went back to the church in which we have grown up from our smallest days. That's a hall, he said. That's a meeting place. But here I saw and felt the presence of Jesus. And, and he gave his life to the Lord, you know. And, he's, and by now he must be a priest. But from where is this presence perception coming? It is coming from here. Called the tent of meeting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? Now what I'm telling you is, how did all these miracles happen through Moses when all these other people look pretty primitive, isn't it? The secret is here. He built this tent. Then what do you do? Look at verse 8. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. What happened? The people also knew something was happening when Moses entered the tent. Can you see now? How was it that these people got frightened and they blamed and they want to go back and they wanted to run off? They were like, you know, not developed at all. But here was a man who said, only remain still and God will fight for you. And here was that man who extended the, the stick and the Red Sea parted. You can't see only his external. You have to see what's behind him. 
and behind him is this place called the Tent of Meeting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? Can you see? It's the hidden background to the miraculous power in the life of Moses. And you can see here, uh, verse 9 if you look at it. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance. While what happened? What happened? The Lord spoke with Moses. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So there was a place called the tent of meeting where Moses had a personal relationship with God. That's why he knew the time to move. He knew the time to wait. He knew the time to be strong. He knew all this timing because he knew the Lord in a personal, intimate relationship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand, my brothers and sisters? <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, see the beauty of this whole thing, you know. Look at the next verse, you know. Uh, thank God these uh, verses have been kept intact for us, you know, thousands of years, you know, so that we have an insight into this, the, this truth. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshipped each at the entrance to his tent. They also learn to worship. My brothers and sisters, I'm convinced if all of us, we worship together, that's not enough. These people worshipped but didn't have a personal relationship with the Lord. So when they didn't have a personal relationship, what happened when the crisis came? The crisis smashed them. But when Moses, when that happened when the crisis came, he stood strong. Actually, there are other passages in Exodus where even God becomes a little upset, you know. And he wants to do something, you know. I want to destroy these people. Who stands strong? Moses. You can see, why is that? Because some people have face-to-face -face relationship, others worship only in the meetings. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the question is, who are you? You know, are you a praise and worshiper in the meetings and not having a personal relationship with Jesus? I'm in this journey for 40 years now. And I can tell you, one of the graces God has given me is restlessness. That means if I can't pray for three, four days, I become a very restless, dissatisfied person. It's like having the flu. That's all I can say. You are discontented, uncomfortable, caught up and you want to fix it somehow or the other and my heart says come back to prayer come back to the feet of Jesus that's how this whole movement is being kept alive by that grace I remember if I was happy while I was not praying, maybe this whole movement would have been lost a long time ago. Because we can be content. Okay, there is, I'm not losing anything by not praying. Nothing, you know, I'm fine. I have no problem at all. I can go and do a common praise and worship. I can give a sermon taking from the scriptures. I can explain it and everyone can do a praise and we are happy together. Remember, though that kind of prayer will not stand in crisis. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the second gift I got was 
problems and crises that drove me back to Jesus. It made me realize I didn't have the strength to face this situation. That's how I found God needs a person. That person needs God. And when you have that, then the supernatural power of God begins to move. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, God wants to do the same thing through your life. But you need to have the tent of meeting. Go before the blessed sacrament. Sit in the presence of the Lord. Get up early morning and sit at his feet and allow him to become real in your life. If you don't do that, there's not real power. Fight for it. Struggle for it. Go against your nature for it. And you will be taken to that place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, this is an urgent request. KX7149. KX7149. You are blocking none other than Father Rector's vehicle. You better, you better move it off. Otherwise, we will all be in big trouble. KX7149. Is there KX7149? Can you please move your vehicle urgently? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. KX is not here. Is he outside? Can, can you? Yeah? I hope KX7149 has moved. Okay, can you just check to see whether it's okay? Okay. And we'll finish with the next verse. Verse 11. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Isn't that beautiful? You know, we become jealous. You know? As a man speaks with his friend. Then Moses would return to, his, to the camp. But his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, so he didn't have parents. So, <laughs> did not leave the tent. Now, what was the training his successor got? He didn't get training in military strategy. What was the training he got? He got training in sitting at the feet of Jesus, of the Lord. Can you see? And when that happens, the supernatural power flows through our ministries. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But you must also remember, Moses could not enter the promised land. You must remember that also. Therefore, human beings are human beings. God is God. You can be his friend, but if you fool around, <laughs> you're gone. <laughs> you can't play, you know, oh, he is my buddy. I can keep this quiet sin inside me. After all, I love him. He loves me. I am and I'm serving him. Won't do. Moses couldn't go to the promised land. It looked pretty cruel, isn't it? He was shown the land and said, you, you won't go in there. So therefore, if we live sinfully, we pay the price. You know, don't imagine that the love of God excuses sinfulness. Don't imagine. We have to pay for that until we work it out completely with God and live in surrender to His mercy and love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we get ready for the worship of God, my brothers and sisters? Uh, and the tent of meeting is coming here to this place and we worship him just the same way that Moses did tonight.
Stadt. Shall we come into his presence? The blessed sacrament will take some time, so I'll just worship the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Yes, we have seen the action of God through the life of Moses. First, we saw the external action. We saw how he held the people together. We saw how he unleashed the power of God by opening up the seas. And then we were privileged to see the inner life of Moses, the secret of that power. And the secret of that power was that he came to the tent of meeting and he hid in his presence. He knew the intimacy with God and the love of God flowed through his heart in the deepest ways. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Glory to your name. Worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So let's invite the Lord tonight. Yes, take us also into that place and help us to experience that power in our own lives.
Let's look at him tonight. Find rest my soul in Christ alone. Yes. Where do you find rest? Do you find rest in the love you have from other people? Do you find rest in the security of the money you have in the bank account? Do you find rest in the work that you do? Do you find rest in an addiction, in a pleasure that you carry in your life? Are you coming to Jesus because you want to find one of those things that you have lost? Maybe a love that you lost. Maybe a person that you want. Maybe a money that you have so desperate for. Maybe a problem in your family life that you so desperately want solved. Maybe a sickness that you want healed. But the answer Find rest my soul in Christ alone. You don't have to explain to Jesus, Lord, give me this, give me that, give me the other one, solve this problem, do this. No, He alone is enough. Find rest my soul in Christ alone. Know His power in quietness and trust. You can repeat after me, Lord Jesus. As we look at the words of the scripture, as we look at the words of the scripture, we look at the people of Israel. We look at the people of Israel. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. when they dealt with the problem, when they dealt with the problem, they could not see you. They could not see you. They fell apart. They fell apart. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Then we look at Moses. Then we look at Moses. And when we look at Moses. When we look at Moses. We realize. We realize that he stood firm. That he stood firm. And Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus. When we look at Moses we realize. When we look at Moses we He realize, went to the tent of meeting. He went to the tent of meeting. In quietness. And built up over time, built up over time a, trust in you. a trust in you. And this quietness and trust, and this quietness and trust gave, him the power gave him the power to remain strong, to remain strong in the heart of the crisis. In the heart of the crisis. Lord Jesus, Lord as Jesus. we come before you, as we, come before we want you. to tell you, take us to that tent of meeting that you took Moses, that you took, that you took Moses Joshua, to, that you took and Joshua, teach us the quietness, and teach us the, quietness, and teach us the trust, and teach us the to trust, release the power in our own lives. To release the power Thank you, Lord. Lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Worship you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Just worship the Lord with your whole heart. Worship the Lord with your whole mind. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Worship you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship your Father. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We glorify you. We lift our hearts to you. We worship your name. Hallelujah. 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 Worship your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name.
Just experience. I will be still and know that you are that you are God. And when that happens, when I spend time in the tent of meeting, in intimacy, hearing his voice, holding on to him, in union with him, I am internally made free. I'm free of my own addiction. I'm free of the need for love from the world. I'm free of trying to find answers in this material dimension. And then when the storm comes, I will rise above it effortlessly. Not just rise, you fly above the storm. I will soar with you above that storm. And then when the Lord says act and we do a little act, we take a little step, this mighty power of God will move upon the lives of other people as well and a great miracle will take place and the mighty anointing of God will flow upon each and every one. Lord Jesus we pray, not only do we desire to know the secret, but we desire the gift of entering that secret place, entering into your heart, morning after morning, night after night, seeking you with our whole life, knowing we'll so above the storm, knowing that one little act will separate the seas and a mighty work of God will come to rest upon the world. Lord, let, let us not be people who praise you and worship you from our own tents, but not enter the tent of meeting, but truly enter the tent of meeting, that we overcome the storm and we are used by you to change the world we live in. Already you are doing so much in us, Lord, and through us, we just want to say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 thank you, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 worship Jesus. you, Glorify Father. Your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 worship you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Find rest, my soul. Let's say it again. Find rest, my soul. In God alone, nothing else. In Christ No is 
in quietness and trust. showing someone who's having some kind of a blood disease and it is manifested in boils that appear and this person is trying all kinds of treatment but it is not uh, being healed but the Lord is saying I'm touching you tonight and when when you lay down your nature and your sinfulness and your brokenness at my feet I'm going to fill you with my presence and my spirit and I'm going to set you free says the Lord thank, thank you. you father hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. You, glory to you hallelujah Lord is showing me a person who's confused with your life and future thinking of whether my future will be strong and I can depend. Lord is telling you, I have called you many times, you have come today. I am your God, I am holding you. I will take you to the green pastures Thank and I will lead you till the end of time, Hallelujah. says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Lord. Lord is talking to a mother who is praying for daughter's lump, breast lump and waiting for the biopsy. Lord says, I have heard your cry and I have touched your daughter and healed her, says the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to a person who has the early stages of Parkinson's. The Lord says, today I heard your cry and I healed you, says the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a person in the medical field who is in deep trouble and you are wondering whether to give up. The Lord says, do not give up. Know that I am God and I am going to relieve you from th in three days' time. I am going to have you come closer to me and I have a better plan for Thank you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is talking to a person. This person is a writer by profession. The Lord says, my child, you experience a loneliness deep within you. Tonight, 
and I will be your companion. You will experience my love and presence in your life, says the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory Chris, to you. Michelle, Menaka, Nihal, my children, do not doubt about my love, for I know you by name and you are mine, says the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing a person who is having a problem in the eyes, tearing, and this person is going through a lot of discomfort, the Lord says, tonight I'm healing you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to you. The Lord is showing a person who is going through a difficulty of hearing, and the Lord is healing this person, and another person who is praying for a patient who is suffering with a brain tumor, the Lord says, I have answered your prayers, and the doctors will confirm this healing, says the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise Glory to you. The Lord is speaking to a person who is addicted to going to a palm reader. For every event that happens in this person's life, this person runs to a palmist. And the Lord says, today I want to show you a better way. Come surrender your life, and I will show you what the future holds for you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is also speaking to a person who is in a religious capacity, either a nun or a priest. And the Lord says, do not fear. Take the step that you have to take. I will be with you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to a person who is here with an obstruction in the throat. And you are suffering a lot because of this condition. Today, the Lord sees your pain. And the Lord hears the cry of your heart and is healing you completely. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to a person with a, with a pain in their right eyeball. And the Lord is touching and healing you right now. Thank, Thank you, you, Father. Lord. Praise Hallelujah. You. Glory. The Lord is speaking to another person whose utility bills have added up. And you're really finding it hard to pay them off. And uh, there's a threat that it will all be uh, disconnected. And the Lord is saying, my child, I see you, I see your struggle, and I will prove to you that I am your father, and I will provide for this need, says the Thank Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us get ready to receive the blessing of the Most Holy Sacrament. 